everyone, my name is Elizabeth, your friendly neighborhood introvert and founder and creator of Skein of a Different Color, and welcome to my April's first Friday podcast video, and I have an embarrassing confession. I am loving the sun. That's right. I am not usually one who loves the sun, but yet here I am in 2023, actually enjoying the sun for once. Like, I am more or less like a stay inside, absolutely loving the dark overcast clouds, bring me all the rainy days kind of a personality. But for some reason this year, I'm actually enjoying it. I'm living for the brightness of the blue skies, the sun being out and, and about, and it might have something to do with how excited my kids are. So I might be absorbing a little bit of that excitement, but you know what? It is what it is. And as you can tell, I have been working up on some more brighter objects, as you can tell right here. But yeah, I honestly have not felt this optimistic about spring in four stinking ever. And that's saying a lot too. Like I'm turning 30 this year. We've got some amazing things happening, such as a trip up to Canada to celebrate my grandpa's 90th birthday and my 30th, kind of like a side trip right there. But then also we have like the Fiber Fusion, which is happening in June. I've got the uh, Fiber Cruise, which is happening in July. And then of course we have Easter this month and then next month is Mother's Day month. And it's just a lot of exciting things happening. And you know, maybe that's why I'm actually liking the sun this time around, like for once in my life, is <laughs> because of how many bright things I see on the horizon. So anyway, I know that I mentioned a lot of bright things, but let me just get a little bit of nitty gritty out of the way. So you will remember me talk about the Jimmy Beans uh, quarterly Malabrigo subscription. And I don't remember if I have my the bag with me right now. I don't. So I'm just going to have to be honest uh, right now. So it was $60 a month and or not a month, a quarter. And I'm like, okay, that's comparable to what uh, Nick Craig had for their subscription, which was about 54, if I recall correctly, like 54 to $57. So about the same price range. And so I was kind of expecting the same kind of quality, the same kind of like exciting things. And yeah, I just don't remember where I put the um, project bag. It's probably somewhere with my projects. Um, but yeah, so I was really looking forward to it. But then when I got these, and I showed you the video already, so it's not like I'm spoiling much. But when I got these, and then I looked at the real retail prices, like these don't even come up to $18 or up to $20 each. And so there was a lot of missed opportunity with that box, just in the price of the yarn itself. And then also with the project bag that came with it. Sure, it's fun. It's unique. It's a snap bag. I mean, who doesn't love a good project bag? I know I love a good project bag. But all in all, it just was not, it did not meet the hype at all. And not like there was like a ton of hype to begin with. But when I want a subscription box, I want yarn that has really amazing quality. I want goodies that actually make up the rest of the cost of the box. And I'm perfectly okay with paying shipping. Like we live in an age where everything has gone through the roof expensive. And so I'm not opposed to paying shipping whatsoever. Um, but when the subtotal cost of the box is not matched by its products or its contents, I guess you guess you could say, then I do have a little bit of an issue. And you know me, I like to keep it real. I like to be able to say, hey, I don't like this box for this reason. I don't like this yarn for that reason kind of a thing. And so here we are. Um, I canceled it pretty much as soon as I received the yarn, which is saying a lot. I mean, they are beautiful colors. Don't get me wrong. Like this pine color is absolutely stunning. In addition to, oh, what was this color again? Florencer. Florencer is really beautiful. And I know that I will work up a beautiful project that uses both of these colors when I have the headspace for it, because I already have three projects and I've already completed two other side projects in the meantime. So mama needs to buckle down and actually finish the projects I've got going on because I do have the 
you'll you would have seen it on Wednesday already but um, I'm working up the bottoms of a virus shawl from fiber spider again uh, go back to that short and you'll see exactly what it is I'm talking about and then I'm also working up the vagabond scarf with Lynn's fine yarn in addition to a raglan cropped sweater from MJ's off the hook designs and so I do have three projects that are already in the works and I need to finish at least one of them before I continue on with any other projects and of course there's probably going to be flu feast so it's not your um screen quality that's kind of like look it's just I got a lot of flu floofies because that's kind of like kind of to be expected when you have natural fibers but anyway so yeah uh the nitty-gritty with the Malabrigo thing yeah I'm just I wasn't here for it I wasn't here for the lack of quality the lack lack of content of the box or anything like that but Specklefinch Studios is on its way and I cannot wait to see what April's box will bring us because let me tell you, I have been loving Speckled Finch more and more every month, especially with the vibe like the vibrant vibrancy of the colors and just like everything that goes along with it. Like I have my um Speckled Finch Studios box or uh bin right here where I have all of the things that I've made using Speckle Finch Studios yarn and last month's oh and then uh that's not Speckle Finch Studios that's a uh, something that needs to go somewhere else but anyway um but yeah I have just been so pleased with everything that I've gotten from Spe Speckle Finch Studios and the Vagabond scarf that I made with last month's box absolutely beautiful I'm loving how the colors are playing together and yes I did block this because of something that I'll talk about a little bit more, like products that I'm loving kind of a thing, but isn't this just gorgeous? I love the lacy open work detail, the kind of shelled edging that's on the top and the bottom, unintentional. I didn't do that, the pattern did it for me. And just everything else that I've received from that box has been amazing. And even like this one, which was my sweater weather box, my very first one, and of course I blocked this one as well. Um, it's just fabulous. I love the speckle designs and I like the speckle detailing and everything like that. Hence speckled Finch Studios, duh. But I have just been over the moon ecstatic and really excited every time I see that I have a new box in the mail. And of course I cannot wait to show it with you. Hence why I've been doing it on the floor because I really want you to see everything up close and personal that I am getting at, from the stitch markers to the yarn to the extra goodies here and there like the stickers or whatever and I do have a notebook down in my bottom cubby right here where I have been storing all of my cards and the stickers and everything like that um but yeah I've just been really loving it honestly and I know I could babble on about <laughs> about Speckle Finch Studios like all day and I kind of do in my uh, Speckle Finch Studios videos. But anyway, now getting to the blocking thing though. So blocking is something that I never thought I would get into, honestly. Like I saw blocking as like a step that wasn't really necessary when it came to crochet goodies or anything like that. But then I did it once with a bottle of conditioning wash that I got from Apple Yarns and I was hooked honestly like and I still have some left over in my uh sample size bottle that I got when I attended the grand reopening of their store back in October I believe it was and so I still have some of that left but I went ahead and purchased two more bottles of their conditioning wash because let me tell you this is a game changer like, if you're on the fence about blocking your garments, then go to Apple, uh, AppleYarns.com. I'll link it down below. Pick this up because it converted me <laughs> to blocking. And I don't say that lightly. I mean, I was just like crocheting along, just leaving it after I was done with it and weaving in the ends. But even this, I blocked and... You know, I thought it was gorgeous before, but now it's like stunning and the lace detail just really opened up. And this is the Summerland shawl that I got off of uh, Ravelry and I can also link that down below for you guys if you want. But yeah, I am so pleased with how it comes out and 
there isn't like too strong of a lavender smell because this only has a few ingredients. It has, uh, let's just see, it has water, pure Castile soap, natural lanolin, and lavender oil. Four ingredients actually, but the water's kind of like, of course, there's water in it. But yeah, so there's three other ingredients besides water in this, and it is fabulous, and you don't need that much. Like, one teaspoon per gallon of water, and you're good to go. And you don't even really need to rinse it out, but I like to rinse it out just so that I can make sure that it's also, like, penetrated everything, because the lavender oil is supposed to be a first defense against bugs or other things like that but even without the bug aspect this is fabulous and i've been blocking like there's no tomorrow <laughs> like i've blocked almost every single shawl that i own including um uh, this one right here you'll probably remember this if you're a frequent visitor uh to my channel from like several months ago but it really opened up this shawl and it's beautiful and it's soft because the lanolin and the lavender oil plus the Castile soap, it really softens things. So even though it's like a super wash merino, which is already super soft, that right there makes the softness level, softness level go to like the nth degree. And it's just like, oh, I cannot stop touching it when I'm done blocking it and I'm enjoying it for the first time after going through that process. And, ugh. I just love it so much. I honestly do. Like, this is not put on. I'm not paid to say any of this. This is just how I feel as a converted blocker. <laughs> um, but anyway, now that I've gotten some niceties out of the way as well, um, yarn of the month. So I have hit some hiccups with the yarn of the month thing that I was doing because of Hobby Lobby's grand clearance haul that they did two months early. Like, come on, what the heck? Typically they do it in like May or June time frame, but here we were in March and they were clearing things out, marking things down, and it was a whole thing because I know that in May and June when it comes up as a memory, I'll be just like, uh, yeah. It was supposed to be in that month, not like a whole, practically a whole season ahead. Um, and so, of course, I did that, which is like all of this yarn that's in this cubby hole right here, which is, oh gosh, let's see, I got 8, 8, 16, I got 26 skeins total for that. And like the grand total, including um, this mug that I purchased as well, which is Yarn Queen, because I am a yarn queen and I'm a snob at that. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, um... I spent like a total of I think it was $104 and some odd cents and that even includes a couple of shopping bags but yeah I was just taken up aback by that not expecting it to happen as soon as it did and a lot of other people do who are also youtubers were not expecting it to happen as soon as it did either and so all of us were kind of caught off guard by that which you know is expected and it's acceptable I guess I mean I don't control Hobby Lobby Hobby Lobby doesn't control me except it kind of sort of does especially when they have the 30% off yarn sales going on but anyway um so that was fun going to three different yarn stores and I was initially just going to stick with two the one in Smoky Point slash Arlington and then also the one in Mount Vernon but then I'm just like you know what I am not happy with the amount of yarn that I have for the Blue Canyon or the olive tree much less the heathered harvest and so I did hit up the one in Everett because I'm just like okay I need to have at least a sweater's quantity worth of yarn for all three of them because I didn't at the time but now I have enough to make a blanket a sweater and a cardigan so mom is happy that's for sure but yeah, as far as like the yarn of the month thing is concerned, I think I'm not going to do that anymore. And not an I think. I know I'm not going to be able to do that anymore just because I'm also doing a stash down currently. Like since the 20th of March, I started a stash down, which means I use up the yarn that I have in addition to my subscription box and maybe one other small yarn purchase a month um, just so that I can, you know, clear some of this out and prove to myself that, hey, I don't need to be like rabidly buying yarn because of how quickly I get through projects, which um, 
kind of coincides with my slower and more methodical crocheting. Like typically I would have had the Vagabond scarf done already in addition to this one, uh, the bottoms of fire sh shawl. Like I would have had those done already if it wasn't for my intentionality to really slow down because I do get stress hives on my arms and I don't have them right now. But what ends up happening if I crochet too much is that my arms right here get like beet red and then I get hives all over them and it's uncomfortable. It's very itchy and I end up having to take an antihistamine and I like slathering my arms with lanolin or what have you. And I just really need to do better at taking care of my arms, my hands and everything like that while I crochet. Hence why I'm going to be doing more and have been doing more methodical crocheting. Now, that isn't to say that I get bored and I need to pump out a project and just like that, otherwise I'll go out of my mind crazy, which is what I did with this wrap right here. And this was used with Mrs. Moon's Plump in the colorway Gooseberry Fool and Marmalade. Now, I just cr like chained as much as I wanted it to be wide right here. And then I just did half double crochet for the first row and then half double crochet in third loop um, for the second row. And then from the second row to the third row, I did, or from the third row to the fourth row, I did alternating uh, back loop only and third loop half double crochet. So that it really has this really neat, almost knitted look to it. Like it almost looks like the fisherman's, um, like fisherman knit style. And then for the border here, I just did like a slit um, half double crochet. I don't even know like the actual term for that stitch, but then also followed up with a single crochet. And let me tell you, <laughs> it was like playing ultimate yarn chicken. I literally had that much yarn left at the end of this marmalade skein of yarn. And I, I, I was just like, oh my gosh, I need to make sure that I actually finish this project, not really so that I could finish the project, but so that I could make sure that I completed the last row of the border because like I designed it myself kind of a thing. And so what I ended up doing was for the last row, I went down a hook size, which meant that I had that much yarn literally left over to weave in. And that was insane. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, this is the closest it's ever come with yarn chicken for me before. And you can check it out on my Facebook page as well. But then, um, so that happened. And then I went up to Apple Yarns because I entered to win one of 25 $15 gift cards. Um, and I won. And so I decided that, you know what, I'll break my stash down just like a little bit. And so I picked up this beautiful Malabrigo Rios yarn in the colorway lettuce. And then while I was there, I saw an example of the Sophie scarf, which is a knitted scarf. So yes, this is 100% knit. And I was honestly inspired. I'm just like, you know what, with with one skein of yarn, I could totally do that. Now, granted, this is like three sizes bigger as far as yarn weights is concerned. And I don't even remember how long of a pro, like how long this is. I don't even have a measuring tape out right now. Let me just double check if I still have a measuring tape, which I don't. So I don't even know how long this is, but I'm guessing that this would be about maybe 60 inches long because it's not quite let's see i am five foot eight okay so it's about about six feet long i would say yeah i am confident to say that this is a six foot long scarf right here but it is just gorgeous and then the eye cord or the cording on the sides just gives it a really beautiful edging that I am um, honestly kind of obsessed with. And I might make this again just because of how fun and how fast of a project it was because I pumped that out in like two or three days. <laughs> and I wanted to make sure that I actually had it done so that I could wear it when I went on a coffee date with one of, with my, one of my mentors. I have two mentors right now. I would, I would say that I have two mentors right now, um, but anyway, 
So yeah, I wanted to make sure that I had that scarf done so that I could show it off to her and have something nice and warm and cozy to wear while we talked. And so yeah, that's pretty much everything that's going on right now. I've got the Fiber Fusion that's coming up in June, uh, June 3rd and 4th, I think. I'll leave the link down below as well. And then I also have the Fiber Cruise, which is happening in July, my very first cruise ever. <laughs> and then other than that, it's just like the Canada trip, uh, which is in August. And there's a lot of exciting things happening right now. And again, I'm not a sun lover. I do not love the sun whatsoever. But lately, I have been loving the sun. And you know, that kind of makes me happy because, you know, the gray was starting to get to me, honestly. And now that it's bright and sunny, it's springtime. It actually feels like springtime, even though most of the days is rainy. But you know what? It is what it is. But yeah, this video is already getting pretty long. So let me just go ahead and let you guys know that I will not be doing, um, any more yarn of the month videos just because I can get a little bit dicey with yarns going out of stock and also being discontinued. Um, but I will still be doing my um, first Friday podcast videos. And if there is a fifth Friday in that month, I will be doing something a little bit extra special. Once again, a huge congratulations to the winner of my spring 2023 400 subscriber giveaway. I am so excited that I was able to do that and was able to bless somebody with their own crochet kit with beautiful items. But anyway, let me just go ahead and close this off here. Once again, my name is Elizabeth, your friendly neighborhood introvert and founder and creator of Skein of a Different Color. And I'll see y'all later. Bye!